Hello guys, and this is the video of version 1.2 of the computer. You may be wondering, like, what did you change, or why well, I don't see much difference? Well, first of all, uh, one of the, ma the two major differences is the computer controls, you know, the clock and stuff, are now controlled here. And everything's labeled. Fix clock, override command, don't worry about that fancy name, just use for reset. Clock, manual tick, and running with lids. This is a very handy little lamp because programs are now capable of ending themselves so they can actually turn the computer off. Although that does not turn off the clock so do not save and quit without having to flick this off. But it changes this indicator. That's also what changed in this version but it's not much to worry about unless you're a programmer. You just say go to command zero. It's nothing. Second thing is this no, oh, yes, the screen's been there for all eternity, but now it's running Graph, a uh, Graph or bar, bar Graph, the demo program. I know it sounds stupid. All demo programs have to sound stupid. It's a tradition, like Hello World or Messenger app, some something stupid. Anyways, uh, change the signs here. Too lazy to move all these signs here because now and version that said to go all the way back there to get control of the clock. No, you don't. Okay. Now, lucky you. Oops. The code that uh, the bar graph program code is completely commented. Yeah, that's the second thing, of course. It comes with bar graph. So, there's basically text all over the place explaining everything. Now, I don't have time in the video for showing you all of these, I'll just go up to them, say so here, here you got the default stuff this is where you usually comment code um, now you've got here next, restart loop, next, 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 next go to beginning loop, next, 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 next go to line, next line of code, I don't know and here are all the functions and all of these, all the little sectors are explained except this one, because this one actually does nothing as it says on this sign, which says nothing. So anyways, not only am I going to show you what's new in this video, I'm going to show you how to operate it. So basically, you usually can get here via this thing, this random pathway I made. Here you can see actually all the wires that are routed underneath the whole computer. Well, because this, I had to go another floor, so not six floors of redstone, because this is another floor here. There's currently nothing in that floor. But further down there's like strange stuff. Anyways, above me is the number display. No, I do not it's not mine. I'm not trying to take credit for it. Okay, so anyways, turning on the computer. Firstly, you have to reset the computer. Now it should come I should upload the world reset, but if you're going to use the program again, you're going to need a reset, it's also good practice. So first you pull down this override command switch and then you push the manual tick button wait for that to unpress and then you pull the switch up again usually this lags a lot because it's all reset in the whole system and graphics card now the program set to reset the whole graphics card so the screen is completely clear as you can see by there not being mentioned on the screen okay now how you would turn it on is you would pull down this clock switch and then this lamp will turn on after a while okay now how you would use the program these four switches here these four they control basically what you're going to graph so it it logs what you want you want to graph so it runs in binary as you may know zero zero one one zero 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 basically these four are important the rest here is not important here okay so this is the data and after a while it will display on the screen so whatever you enter there will be graphed on the screen after you turned it on of course now once it displays in the screen one thing you need to do is quickly change the value if the another bar gets added and it looks precisely the same as the previous bar then you didn't enter it quick enough or if it's not what you entered then it's decided to continue right at the second you entered the 
busy entering the value. Okay, now also this thing's got settings. We just fly to these red poles here. Also, this is another thing I fixed. Simple inversion problem. Put inverters to fix it. The add by value, so this is the distance between the bars. You know, the bars on the bar graph. You can make it 1, which means there's no space. By default, it's on 2, so there's 1 pixel space. And then here is Y offsets, where the lines go to. Basically, currently 0, 1, 1, 1 makes it the bottom, and 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 makes it the top. And then there's a value in between for the middle, so if you want... I don't know. Uh, okay. So that's about all I can explain about how the thing works. Well, how the how to use it. Let's use it then. I'm probably gonna fast forward the computer actually running because it's actually quite slow. Although I overclocked in this version as well. That's another thing. It's actually quite a long list of changes. Those two of the main my major ones. So flick this. Wait for it to start up. There. And we wait. Q fast forwarding. There we go. There's a bar. Can I quickly, 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 quickly change the value? That's a very high value because the thing's actually in reverse. And we wait again. There we are. As you can see, it actually went much faster this time because startup of the program takes quite a while. You can enter any value you like. It'll constantly graph until it runs out of screen space, of course. And there we are. Oh, God. This computer makes my computer lag as loud. Okay. Let's turn it off. Show you the reset again. Override command. Manual tick. Also, if you want to do debugging of your program, you can keep the switch up and make sure the clock's not on. And you can push this manual tick button. It's basically like the clock, because that constantly sends a little signal to the computer. That just does it manually. Don't push it too fast, it'll make the computer malfunction. But yeah. That's for debugging the program. You can also probably do it at the program memory as well. So yeah, just uh, one last thing. Thanks for the digital diamond microforms. It's it really means a lot to me. I just you know I was so amazed when I saw it on my f on the first page. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And I SMSed all my friends and Skyped them and Twitter and everything. They weren't on Skype or Twitter. But they did receive the SMSs. So yeah, thanks for watching. Also, I'd like to know, you'd probably like to know that I made this version because, mainly because it came on Digital Diamond. Uh, yeah. Because I would get really frustrated with world corruption. Now I'm on Digital Diamond, so like, ah, well, what the heck, you know, I might just, just try it again, knowing how many people visited it now. So this is also to the noobs out there, like, what the heck do I do with this computer? I don't know how to use it. And will it run Minecraft in Minecraft? No, it will not. Shut up about that. And no, it will not run Crisis. Tetris, if you program it. Snake, possibly. Whoops. Um, Pac-Man, have fun with that. Whatever, just... Yeah, so thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy my computer as much as I did building it. Goodbye.